graduated from Fresno Pacific University a few years ago, but I decided this semester to take a couple classes at Fresno City to keep my mind active and take advantage of the online offerings. Look, there! There's a train coming through! I've been really thinking a lot about the Fresno arts community and the theater community and just really been inspired by the ways my peers have been adapting to the reality that we can't have 50 to 100 to 200 people in a theater anymore. And I want to highlight a few of these stories. I wanted to hear a little bit from you about um, how the Backyard Readers Theater Lab got started. Backyard Readers Theater Lab, uh, you could say it started a couple years ago. I started with friends just reading scripts in my living room. Okay, so during the time of COVID, I just got impatient. Technique and timing equals talent. I'm gonna do it in the backyard. I'll start a private Facebook group. I heard him whisper to his pal, get her. Terry Lewis has come, he has missed one. I love that I'm able to, it feels like I'm still doing theater. I think Camille has been like to 85, 90% of them. We read really heavy hitters and being able to talk about it and really get other people's perspective on how it impacted them in some way. There's people wanting to just be in the audience now. So while it started as like an actors group, now it's, oh, I wanna be in the audience. So my really good friend Michael asked me to be a part of a production of Captain Louie that he's putting on. It's going to be streamed. <laughs> Trying to sing and dance in a mask in a room that's already kind of warm is a challenge. I'm going to try to get a few interviews done today, uh, one of which with our um, vocal director, Mindy Ramos. The masks are a challenge, um, especially when we're trying to breathe in deep for like that for singing. So that's been a little bit of a difficulty for us. So it's been a little tricky to hear, you know, all the parts together. I'm just excited that we are finding ways to be able to overcome the challenges um, that we're facing with um, COVID and how it affects the arts. The way that we're like doing the show is going to be really cool. And I think with the masks on, it makes it even like a cooler aspect. It's been a really good experience to learn how to project better and how to um, bring the same amount of energy and character um, that you can bring without a mask through your eyes and through your voice with half of your face being covered. We had two options when we signed up for this contract, um, the Selma Art Center, and one option was to either stream it live, like they're doing it live and it's being streamed live, or to edit it, take some time with it, film it, edit it, get it ready, and then put it out into the world. We decided to record the vocals separately to kind of help with us being masked. Um, it's gonna be weird to be lip syncing to ourselves singing. I've never done that before. I'm Big Red Plane and I are on the trip. See the way we swoop and swoop and swoop. All around the sky we fly. Do the Milky Way and try to swoop. It's been really hard to adjust, you know, going to work and rehearsal and taking a few classes or whatever, that's, that used to be what I did. And now I, it's like really hard for me to make it through the week. I'm super tired. It's just really interesting to see how much more um, patient I have to be with myself and it's reminding me to be really patient and compassionate towards others because we're all operating under an insane base level of stress and anxiety and we have been for the last, what, seven, eight months now?
So today is Halloween and it's the last day of the three day run of Captain Louie virtually. It's so weird to have like a performance weekend when we film finished filming weeks ago. I feel sad because I, you know, don't know when the next time I'm gonna get to do that is and um, who knows when, you know, like live theater is gonna come back if it does, you know, it's just so, all the unknowns are really scary. Oh, Tony, don't be hard on me. I've been patient, I keep clean. Still figuring out this world, please. I am a student at Fresno City College. I am a theater major. Um, this is the second project that I've done with um, the theater department. I will be doing um, personal inventory for this project. So what that means is I'm going to be doing basically like a daily video of um, my emotions. So what I'm feeling in that moment. A little anxious. Excited, lonely. The world doesn't stop turning. This exercise comes from Uta Hagen. It's one of her exercises where you take a, a personal inventory of your emotions and that helps remove whatever block you have um, for you to go into your scene or your monologue or whatever work you're doing. I know we won't stop orbiting. Can I take a turn around the sun again? This is day one of my personal inventory. Day two. Day three. It's day th four. I just finished a popsicle. Day five. The question for today is how do I feel? I feel restless lost. I feel disappointed that things were supposed to happen this year and didn't. What do I need? I need stillness. I need some kind of human connection. A hug. Some kind of reassurance that the world isn't completely on fire. I need a better diet. Quarantine diet's going strong. We're just gonna stick with how I feel. A little anxious. I feel like this is getting very misery. <laughs> like my 21st year of life has kind of been stolen from me a little bit because of the pandemic. I feel excited because I got a call back for the Plague Diaries. Like the smoke has been draining the life out of me. Envious of my sister's life at the moment. I feel like I'm very happy for my sister. I just feel like I wish I had some of her content. Genuinely happy, which I feel is ironic because I just got back from a date in the time of Corona. Um, like I had a very productive day today and I'm very proud of myself. Afraid because on Wednesday, I have to get an MRI for my head and my neck. I have something called a Chiari malformation. My brain is literally too big for my head, and so it's kind of drooping into my spinal cord a little bit. And that makes me feel um, stressed out a lot of the time. Security blanket wrapped around my head Supposed to make me feel safe Day six Day I feel like my anxiety has been not easy to cope with the past couple of days Anxious that I have to get an MRI I'm trying to keep it together Because I feel like I'm literally going to die sometimes Will I ever 
I had an MRI today and they told me I'm going to have to have surgery. Not urgent, they're going to have to remove a piece of my skull. Honestly, I just feel really overwhelmed by a lot of stuff and um, I just feel really scared that, um, that I'm gonna have to have brain surgery and um, I feel and I feel really scared because I had to watch my dad go through the same surgery and go through that recovery and I just I feel really sad that my family's gonna have to watch me go through that too and it's going through something like this isn't easy if the world didn't seem like it was ending every day but I wrote this song last year when my dad was having surgery. Uh, he had to have brain surgery and he's fine now. I had to help take care of him and, um, you know, get him back up on his feet. I wrote this song about like getting through a hard time and also like being there for someone and kind of forgetting yourself a little bit while well, somebody else needs your energy more than you do. Right foot in front of the left Can't wait to see what's next I'm just waiting Day 14. Day 20. Day 36. Tell me about your journey. I want to say maybe like the first week of filming, I was like still trying to get into it. What did you learn about yourself? I've gotten to a point now that I realized that, you know, I'm just comfortable with my with myself really more now than I think I have I've ever been. When you become more comfortable with who you are, you have like this innate response to be comfortable in putting yourself in someone else's shoes. It's been hard and we're all trying to find ways to adapt and fill that void. So it's been, it's been cool to be a part of my own little slice of trying to figure out how to fill that void and talking to people who are adapting. There's this idea of who I want to be and then there's the person who I actually am. And if I'm not reaching the person who I want to be, then I'm constantly disappointed with myself. But with how the world is at the moment, there's no need to be disappointed in yourself because everybody's doing the best that they can. And it made me look at myself constantly and think, this is who you are. Look at you, you are doing amazing. 